no alarm, you oversleep. You reach to turn on your lamp, it only clicks. You sit up to listen for familiar sounds throughout the house, it's silent. The power is out, your world is dark. You know how hard it is to go without electricity? Being powerless limits progress, opportunity, and life. How powerless do we feel when we don't have food or water? The truth is, we don't often go without them, but millions around the world do. The Convoy of Hope's One Day Defeat the World campaign can help transform the lives of millions of people so they can move forward, take on challenges, and embrace life. Convoy of Hope is a nonprofit organization that has helped more than 130 million people throughout the world by feeding hungry children, educating farmers, empowering women, and bringing relief to families in need. The average person works 240 days per year, but giving just one day's wage, you help restore power to people all around the world. And that power, combined with nutritious meals, relief supplies, and hope, opens the door to Christ's love, education, and so much more. Your one day transforms their every day. Hi, everybody. I, I so enjoyed worshiping with you today. I mean, those songs, they touch a core of me. I, I don't know if you sense this or not, but they, they touch a core in me that all these circumstances have just brought to the surface. And that is how much I need God in my life and how much I need His peace and strength. And I, I, know, I know many of you, you're, you're feeling that right now, and you've made an excellent choice to connect and worship with us today. Before we get to move into a new series of messages called There's Power in the Blood, it's about the blood of Jesus and its benefits for us and why that's so important to us in the Christian faith. Before we get to that, I just want to I just want to talk with you for a moment uh, about uh, about a number of things and about giving. Uh, we're going to ready to have our Easter offering, our One Day to Feed the World offering, that will happen on Easter Sunday. Whether we're meeting in person or we're meeting like this, and I'll tell you why. That's because for the last several years, River City Church has given one day of their wages to Convoy of Hope, who then feeds children around the world. And you know what's true? This is one of the harsh realities of the world. If we give up on being generous, even in our point of need, children are going to suffer more greatly. So I want to ask you, be praying about how it is you're going to participate in our One Day to Feed the World offering. Also, uh, as, you're, as you're thinking about what's happening, how we're connecting as River City Church, we're going to be hosting our first Wednesday worship and prayer meeting on Wednesday, April 1st, online. And so I want to invite you to be with us right here, praying, looking to God, connecting with God. And uh, I think we're going to, we're, we're, as we develop that service, we've got some special things that are going to happen. And you don't want to miss being a part of that. Also, I want to encourage you to stay connected with us, not only by watching services online like this, but there are some of us who are, who are watching. You've never connected with Facebook because you don't like it or it makes you nervous or something like that. And I just want to encourage you, while we're in this season of isolation, you don't, have to, you don't have to make any other friends or like anything else, but get an account on Facebook and like River City Church. Can you do that? Uh, I, I don't want you to like leave me right now and do that, but I want you to do that if that's not a part of your life because that's one of the ways that River City Church is connecting with its congregation. Also, uh, I, I want to encourage you today um, to recognize that we're, we've got resources that we're putting out there for children's ministry, and you can find those on our RC Kids page. You can find more information at our blog for, for parents. That's on our website, rivercity.info. And <clears throat> I just want to encourage you to recognize right now is your, is your opportunity to give. Right now, I want to encourage you to give to the Lord the same way 
maybe that you always have, or maybe give to the Lord like you never have. Because you know what's true? When everything else changes in our world, when you can't depend on anything else, God is still good. God is still is still worthy of our praise and our worship. And God invites us to trust Him in giving. And so right now, I just want to encourage you, follow the links, give as you can. There are different ways that you can give here at River City Church. You can give through the mail. You can give right now through this online apparatus. You can, you can text to give. And you can, you can also drop the offering in in person at our office still, or drop it in our offering box that's in our lobby. This last week, I loved it, the accountant said that several offerings walked in all on their own on Monday. Thank you so much. Let's take a moment to pray right now as we give. Father, we bless you today because you have blessed us in countless ways, more deeply, more deeply than we have recognized. Right now, Lord, as we give these gifts to you, we, we are honest and transparent with the fact we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know that you hold tomorrow. And so today, we want to give you these tithes, these offerings, to continue the ministries of River City Church, to help us to reach out to people who are in need, special need at this time, and to continue our ministries through missionaries around the United States, and around the world who are reaching out to people who need Jesus. Bless our gifts, we pray. And God, I pray, bless those who give. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, listen, today I'm starting a new series. I've been looking forward, actually, to this series for some time because we're headed up to Easter. I want to talk to you in, over these next three Sundays, I'm going to be talking about the, the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Because you know what? There is power in the blood of Jesus. That's our, that's our theme today. That's our theme for these next three weeks. And in particular today, I want for you to recognize that there's victory for you to claim in the blood of Jesus. I'm going to talk to you about some specific ways that the blood of Jesus gives us victory, gives us power. Um, And as I do that, I just want to point out to you, the Bible starts talking about the significance of blood very early on. And in fact, you know the way the Bible works, it kind of leans forward to the ending. So from very early in the Bible, the Bible starts talking about, the Bible starts talking about uh, uh, blood as it relates to our relationship with God and then we see how it's there in the blood of Jesus and how it's it, it, on the cross and how it's even important at the very end of the Bible. Look at a couple of these verses with me. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. This is so interesting to me. The life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. He's talking to the Jews about how it is that they're going to connect with God through blood sacrifice has happened in the Old Testament. And he says, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. You know that word atonement? It's a word that was actually invented by people who were translating the Bible into English. They were trying to find a way in English to express what this word atonement is translated from. And where they got this word is It's the at-one-ment that we experience with God through the blood. That is to say, when our relationship is severed and divided, when we feel divorced from God, the blood is the thing that brings us to be at one with God. Look at at the end of the Bible. I mentioned to you that this this theme of blood, it's throughout the Bible... We find it at the end of the Bible in Revelation chapter 12. Revelation contains a lot of things that I don't fully understand. But look, look with me here. Revelation 12.10 Now have come the salvation 
and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Messiah. This is people speaking who, 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 were, um, who suffered to the point of death for their own faith. And it says, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God, that's, that's the devil, day and night has been hurled down. And how did they overcome him? How, how did these people overcome? How did these people overcome uh, the devil? How did they overcome Satan? How did they overcome his lies? How did they overcome his accusations of them? They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The blood of the Lamb has power. It has power for you and me that we need to, we need to somehow connect with today. What could we say about the kind of victory that the blood of Jesus gives us? It gives us victory over sin. The blood of Jesus gives us victory over sin. Now the Bible, it, it ends up saying this in a whole lot of different ways, but I want for you to just think about what happens in the image of the cross, what happens in the story of the cross. Of course, Jesus' hands and His feet were nailed to the cross. He was nailed to the cross, His hands and feet. And when you think of hands and feet, what I think of is this. That Jesus' blood, it, it gives us victory over every place that we've gone with our feet. It gives us victory over everything we've done with our hands. Today, the blood of Jesus offers you and me victory over our past. You know, I've been a pastor nearly 30 years now. And I've talked to so many people who, who have been running from God. And probably one of the biggest reasons why people run from God or they give up on the idea that they can ever have a relationship with God is because of shame. They look back at their past. They look back at their sins and they think it is pointless it is helpless. It is hopeless. Look at what the Bible says. Check out this scripture. Hebrews 9.14. I love it. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal Spirit, Christ offered Himself to God as a perfect, sacrifice for our sins. You know, it's not just that God offers to forgive our sins. But the Bible says that God forgets our sins. He throws our sins into a sea of forgetfulness. The Bible says He, he remembers our sins no more. And so, He's not only He's not only paid for it with the sacrifice, but He's forgotten what we did. And I love what we see in these words when He talks about how, how, how our consciences have been cleansed. Our consciences, consciences have been purified by the blood of Christ. He says, so that we can worship God. Do you know why I can worship God today? It's not because I'm a perfect person. I know I'm not. It's not because I've got it all together. That's not it at all. The reason why I can worship God is because through the blood of Jesus, my own understanding of myself has changed. I'm not someone running from God. I'm not someone who's in an argument with God any longer. Instead, God has changed me from being in His enemy to being His son or daughter. Today, I want you to hear this. The blood of Jesus transforms identity. And I don't know who you've been with. I don't know what you've done. 
I don't know what kind of mistakes are in your past, but listen to me. The blood of Jesus, it not only cleanses us of our sins, but it changes who we are. And I don't know about you, but that's good news I need to hear. Second kind of victory that the blood of Jesus gives that I, I just want to speak about today is the blood of Jesus gives us victory over opposition. You know, we're all facing incredible opposition. Things maybe aren't turning out like you planned. I heard from a woman in our church just, just this week. And her daughter had to, had to cancel her wedding because of this present isolation routine that we're in. I've heard from other people who've already lost their jobs or been laid off. We don't know what the future is going to hold. The things that the news tells us day and night are scary things. But what I, I want you to understand today what the blood of Jesus does. There's an amazing promise in Colossians chapter 1 that describes to us what the blood of Jesus does. And it says, and through Him, that's Jesus, to reconcile to Himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through His blood shed on the cross. Do you follow that? Listen, he says, he says that through Jesus, all things on heaven and earth are reconciled. He says that, the, the, that peace is made through the blood of Jesus. That's, that, that's an incredible promise. Because it means... One of the things that we can claim today in the blood of Jesus is peace for us in the midst of every circumstance. Why? Because He's reconciled all things. He's made peace between them. And because He's made peace with His blood. The blood of Jesus is a, is a peace compounder. The blood of Jesus is a peace multiplier in your life and in my life if we will lean into Jesus and claim His blood over our lives. Now I know that in our modern world it has to sound very strange what I'm saying. But I'm saying to you the promise is there in the Bible from thousands of years back. There's life in the blood there's peace in the blood. There's forgiveness in the blood. Look what Jesus offers the, the night before He was crucified. He has this to say, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I, give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. I don't know what you're experiencing today. I don't know what kind of invasion of your peace you're going through. Maybe it's depression or stress or anxiety. Maybe it's physical illness. Maybe it's a disruption to your job. I'm telling you, today, our God invites us to trust Him. And in exchange for our trust, God will give us peace. Look at this promise from the Bible. These are words that I've leaned on in some of the hardest times of my life. And I'm leaning on them now. You will keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because He trusts you. What am I wanting you to know today? It's this. The blood of Jesus sustains us in times of crisis. I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus is something for you to claim today. And that's our bottom line. Claim the blood of Jesus for victory in your life today. 
I want to ask you, just as we close this time together, I want to ask you where you're at. Where you're at with God. I want to ask you if before the world went crazy, if you really had a relationship with God, I want you to know today God is inviting you in to make peace with Himself through the blood of His Son Jesus. I want to know where you're at today. Are you, are you going through a crisis and you just don't know how to get through it? I want you to know today, today, the blood of Jesus is a place of peace for you. He's given up His life, not just so that you could have eternal life and not just so that your sins could be forgiven, but so that you can have a lasting, stable strength and peace today. Right now, Right now, I want to invite you to pray to receive Jesus. I want to ask you, I want to invite you right now, pray to ask Jesus' blood to cover your life. Pray to ask Jesus' blood to cleanse you of your sins. I know it sounds mysterious if you've never done this before, but I'm telling you, there is real power there in that blood. And I'm just going to invite you right where you are. Just close your eyes. And just pray like this, right where you are. Father, I believe. You just pray that right where you are. Father, I believe in Jesus. And I ask you to forgive my sins. Father, I believe in Jesus and I, I claim the victory of the blood of the Son of God over my life. Not only that I will be cleansed, God, but that your peace might reign in my heart and soul. Help me to live a new life. Help me to live a life that's following Jesus. And I pray in His name.